Hello, this is Mr. Martin. In this video, we are going to uh, review our area formulas. Uh, so, all of these formulas you should have seen before. Um, there's some stuff for perimeter here, which we're not going to cover in this video, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, let's take a look at uh, six shapes that we have here, and then we're going to eventually do one more, um, but we'll start with these six. So, um, We've got our six shapes here, and then we have our formulas below them. So let's go ahead and label what uh, each of these are. So for the first one, we've got our triangle. So that's our formula for our triangle. And then our next one here. Let's go ahead and take care of this. There we go. Okay, our next one here we have is for our rectangle. And then next we have our square. And in our second row here we have our parallelogram. So a parallelogram is like a rectangle that they kind of tipped over. But if you notice here, for a rectangle, it's length times width or length times height, however you want to do it. And then for a parallelogram, it's the same dimensions here. It's this bottom part, which they call the base for a parallelogram. They just call it the length here. And then the height, which is the same thing here. So make sure you do the height straight up and down, perpendicular to the, uh, the bases here. All right, and then the next one is our trapezoid. Okay, and if you notice in our trapezoid, we have an upper base and a lower base, or sometimes they'll turn it on its side so you'll have a left base and a right base. And again, the height here is that perpendicular distance. Perpendicular it makes right angles with the two bases. Okay, and then finally, we have our circle. Okay, so here's the six formulas we're going to work with. And... Um, again, we're, we're not going to work with the uh, perimeter ones. So for the triangle, we've got one half base times height. For the rectangle, we've got length times width. You could do base times height too. For the square, we've got S squared, where S is the length of a side. Okay, for parallelogram, base times height. Now for a trapezoid, this one looks a little more complicated. It's really not too bad. We're going to take the two bases and add them up. We're going to multiply it by the height, and then we're going to take half of that. And then for a circle, we have pi r squared, where r is the radius. Okay, so if you're not sure what any of these letters are, go ahead and pause the video and write them down. B is base, h is height for any of these, where you see b and h. L and w are length and width. S is the length of a side in the square. All sides are equal. And R is the length of the radius, so from the center to the circle. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. Let's take a look at number two. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to identify what type of figure. So we can see that this is a triangle. And then what we want to do is we want to write down the formula. So if you don't remember it, just look back up in your notes and we can see that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So area equals one half base times height. And then we're going to go ahead and substitute in the base and the height from the picture. So the base here is 15 and the height here is 21.3. And then if we plug this into our calculator, we should get 159.75. And then let's not forget to include our units. Since this is area, area is measured in square units. Okay, so this is meters squared for square units. Because for the area, basically what we're doing is we're dividing this into squares 
dividing it into squares. This is just kind of a rough sketch. And then we're counting how many squares fit inside there. And in this case, based on these dimensions, we would have 159.75 squares that were one meter by one meter. All right, and again, anytime you need to pause and uh, get some help, feel free to do that. All right, so let's go down to number five. All right, first we want to identify the shape. So this is a trapezoid. And again, if when you're going through, if you forget your formulas, feel free to scroll back up and check those out. So we have one half times, let's see how they write it. There's a couple different ways to write it. Okay, H times the sum of B1 and B2. All right, and then we'll go ahead and substitute in the height, which is 16. And then B1. Now either of these could be B1 and the other could be B2. It doesn't really matter. So we'll just start on the top with 19 plus the other base, which is 27. So I used the height. I used this base. I used this base. I didn't really need to use this. That's an extra, some extra information in the problem. And I didn't need to use this either because those, those aren't any of the things in our formula, so we don't need to use those. So sometimes they're going to give you some extraneous measurements and you need to make sure you pick out the ones that you need. All right, let's go ahead and uh, plug this into our calculator and we should get 368, what's our unit? Centimeters. It's area, so it's centimeters squared. All right, let's go ahead and do number eight. Okay, so over here, if you see, these two sides are the same. So this is a clue that it's not going to be a trapezoid. As you see, the upper and lower base here are different, but here, the top and the bottom are the same. That's going to be our parallelogram. So we have a parallelogram. And we know our formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times height. Okay. So the base is this distance here, so that's going to be 11.8. And then we have a whole bunch of other numbers here. We have 18.5, we have 16.1. But the key here is that the 16.1 is the perpendicular distance between those 11.8s. This distance, 18.5, is on a diagonal here. So we wouldn't measure the distance between two things on a diagonal, if you wanted to measure the distance from the floor to the ceiling, you go straight up. That's why we're going to use the 16.1. So this is extraneous. We've got 16.1. Go ahead and plug that into our calculator. And we should get 189 point. Nine eight. Let's don't forget our units. Our units are meters since it's area. We're measuring in squares, so it's square meters. All right, let's do one more for this video. Let's do number nine. This one doesn't look like any of our shapes, but it we could see here it's a circle, but it's only half of a circle. So this is what we call a semi. Semi is half circle. Okay, so we're going to take the area of a circle, which is pi times r squared, and then we're going to divide it in half. Okay, because we only have half of the circle. All right, so we can see our radius here from the center to the circle is 17 feet. So I'm going to have pi times 17 squared over 2. Now, in your calculator, if you have a pi button, that's the best one to use. If you don't, you can estimate it with 3.14, but I'm going to use pi. We'll get a little bit better uh, answer, more accurate. And if we do use the pi key, uh, we should get, we'll round this to 454, and our unit is feet, so it's going to be feet 
and it's square feet, feet squared. And there you go. All right, so again, if you have any questions, um, make sure you get those answered. And what you may want to do as you're working through problems is maybe just copy these down onto a sheet of paper so you have them handy. Um, or if you want to take a picture on your phone and then you could just uh, refer back to the picture on your phone. Um, either way, just make sure you have those handy and it'll make it easier as you go through and you finish the rest of these problems, which is going to be uh, the rest of your assignment. So in the next video, we'll look at a couple more uh, examples, um, trying to find some of the other dimensions um, besides the area. So given the area, finding maybe the base or the height or something like that. All right. Uh, We'll see you in the next video.